American Airlines Center thoroughly enjoying their first NBA Finals experience as the Mavericks took game one Thursday night. The question now, can the Heat even the series this evening? It's game two of the 2006 NBA Finals. And so it begins. You've lived your life for this one moment. A chance to march into the pantheon of greatness where a legacy of champions awaits. the 60th edition of the NBA Finals. The 228th consecutive sellout at the American Airlines Center. And boy, are they ready as they hope the Mavericks can go up 2-0 before heading to Miami. Meanwhile, the Heat trying to even things up here are the NBA Finals. Hello, everyone. Along with Yubi Brown, Mike Green on hand, and welcome to Game 2. Yubi, the Mavericks have to be absolutely thrilled to take Game 1 because their two best players, Dirk Nowitzki and Josh Howard, had subpar shooting performances. But to show you the development of this team, they could play poorly from shooting the ball and still get the big win. Well, Mike, any time that your two best guys go 7 for 28, that's 25%. But what you do is you never stop working. You make the game easier for the rest of your peers. Accept the double teams. Give the ball up in traffic so that you come in with the two of them, both four assists apiece. Then Dirk Nowitzki with three steals. Then the rebounding. Howard with 12. Dirk with 10. So not only did they fill up all the columns, Mike, they made the game easy and winnable for the Dallas Mavericks. Jason Terry's 32 points. They were a little helpful as well. Meanwhile, with more on the map, let's go to Stu Scott. Mike, the only thing both teams agree on is after a second worst finals game ever, Shaq is about to go off. Sagana Jop, you're going to be d him up. Everybody's saying, give Shaq the ball, give Shaq the ball. What do you think about that? I mean, it's going to be tough. He's such a great player. He did a lot of good things for this league. I mean, he's a dominant player, man. We just got to play hard, me and them. Shaq accused a lot of people of flopping against him. How tempted are you to take a dive just to get a foul on the big man? That's funny because Coach told me the whole year to take a charge. I don't even know how to take a charge. If I fall down, that means it hit me. All right, he also knows an offensive game, Mike. He hit a three-pointer in the last game of the season to keep the Mavs streak alive of consecutive games with three-pointers, Mike. All right, Stu, but he's out there for his defense. Meanwhile, for Miami, Pat Riley, after the loss, used words like horrendous and disgusted to decide his team's performance. But look, they were only down three with three and a half to go, despite some pretty horrible numbers, as you can see right there. So you beat, what do they need to do differently to get the W? Well, Mike, first of all, shoot a higher percentage from the field, three-point shooting, and on the line. Drive the ball to the basket, stop settling for jump shots, get on the foul line. Cut down on the turnovers. When Dallas employs his own defense, you must find Shaq in the middle. He'll always be played one-on-one. -on -one. Sounds easy. <laughs> so it does. Let's get more from Lisa Salters. 
Mike, the Miami Heat did not shoot around today like teams usually do in the morning before a night game. Pat Riley told me that he wants to try to keep his team's routine as normal as possible through the finals, but he said sometimes change is good. He said we had a great practice yesterday, a very good walkthrough at the hotel this morning. He wanted the next time his team was on the court to be game time. Mike? All right, Lisa, it looks like we're ready to go. Let's go to PA announcer Billy Hayes. Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the 2006 NBA Finals. Tonight is game two featuring the Miami Heat and your Dallas Mavericks. Would you please rise for the presentation of the colors by members of the United States Army Color Guard. And now here to sing the national anthem, please welcome from American Idol, Elliot Yami. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched. We're so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still Ladies and gentlemen, from American Idol, Elian Yamin, how about it? Now, the Eastern Conference champions, the Miami Heat. The head coach is Pat Riley. The starting lineup is guard from Florida, number 55, Jason Williams. And guard from Marquette, number three, Dwayne Wade. And forward from Kentucky, number eight, Antoine Walker. And forward from Florida, number 40, Yodanis Haslam. And at center, from Louisiana State, number 32, Shaquille O'Neal.
starting lineup for your Dallas Mavericks. The head coach is Avery Johnson. At guard from Arizona, number 31, the Jet is on the runway, Jet Terry. At guard from Seton Hall, number 44, Adrian Griffin. At center from Oak Hill Academy, number seven, Sakana Chap. Forward from Wake Forest, number five, Josh Howard. And a forward from Germany, number 41, Dirk Nowitzki. Ladies and gentlemen, the Western Conference champion, Dallas Mavs. They are fired up. Tip off for game two of the NBA Finals coming up after this message and a word from our ABC stations. For Dallas, Sagana, Jop, Adrian Griffin, they won't score a lot, but such good defenders. Meanwhile, Antoine Walker scored a lot of points, but he took a lot of shots, and he'll need to play well for Miami. Our secondary audio channels of tonight's game hit the SAP button as we're set to go for the tip off of game two. O'Neal and Jop. And the Heat who've changed road uniforms from game one. They wore red in game one. Got the new ones. Every team has those alternate road uniforms. Nobody's superstitious here, though. Okay? <laughs> right. Already chance of defense, and that was such a key in game one, UB, and it's something that people never thought you'd see as O'Neal gets it down low, trying to find some room, puts it in, and a foul. He's going to say the Dallas defense was terrific in game one, which it was. Well, the Dallas will give you different looks during the course of a quarter. They'll double team. They'll uh, double team on the catch. They'll double team on the dribble. They'll play a little zone. And everything will go how the coaching staff is feeling at the moment. The big thing for Miami, get the ball to Shaq to start the game. You see what he did? He was 0 for 8, finally hit one late. This is that first one there. He just seems way off. And another lane violation. You, know, you talked about this That's in right. game one, UB. O'Neal has a little hitch. There's a delay, and it forces the players to go in. If you watch, if you step over that line before he releases it, it's a violation, gets to shoot it again. He had two of those in game one. Well, he'll get the pause right at the top that the people feel that are on the line that the ball is going to be released. Instead, he hesitates with the ball over his head. Again, he's not even been close. He's really struggling right now. He admitted he's thinking too much at the line, but said, I will start to hit my free throws. Well, right here, this is the big thing tonight. They must decide how to handle the quick double teaming on Dirk Nowitzki by the Miami defense. They're running people at him from the blind side. So let's see. Now, game one, he adjusted beautifully, gave the ball up to the other players. Nowitzki was 4 of 14. He gave credit to the Heat defense, and Udonis Haslam played him very well, as did the centers for Dallas against O'Neal. Jason Williams, good open look. Can't get it to fall. Well, that will be there all night as long as Dallas is in the man-to-man. -man. You can see they came at him hard, and all he has to do, he'll be open on the first pass. Nowitzki fouled on the pass. He was trying to kick it out. And it's going to go against Shaquille O'Neal. That will be his first. Now, Dirk Nowitzki has changed his game tremendously since he first came in this league. There was very little of this in the early years. He would settle outside, try to get off a jump shot. This year, he's improved tremendously getting to the basket. Throughout the playoffs, he's averaging over 10 foul shot attempts a game, and his rebounding is up because he's closer to the basket, and he hurts you on the offensive boards. And once he gets to the line, remember, this is a seven-foot guy who's shooting 90% from the free throw line. Now, they call that, obviously, in the act of shooting. Nowitzki did a good job selling it. He admitted, and here's one of the best players in the world, he admitted he was very nervous to start game one. As the Mavericks looked a little tight, remember, Miami jumped out to that 11-point lead. But their defense turned it around. That and the shooting of Jason Terry. 
Williams, nice drive. Uh, that's what Pat Riley wants to see more of from their perimeter players. Right, now Jason in game one, five for 11, got to the rim in the first quarter. We told you he gets a lot of points exploiting your defense, especially off the dribble. Levitsky with Haslam on him. Josh Howard's got Walker, nice move. Josh Howard, again, he didn't shoot well, but he can get you anywhere from 20 to 30 on a given night. Well, we know that and coming into that, he was a 20-10 man for five previous games. Now, there's just a careless turnover. Now, in game one, we had for Miami, Walker with six turnovers, Wade with five. They're the ones that you've got to cut down, Mike, the careless turnovers, because it's precious shot attempts at the basket that you're losing. Pat Riley said, despite calling the game horrendous and disgusted with some of it as Howard misfires. Jock right there with the offensive rebound. Nowitzki's now going to go to the basket. Riley said that he felt his team outplayed the Mavericks for 40 of the 48 minutes. But the end of the second quarter and the last five minutes of the game was the turnaround. Howard, three-pointer won't go. We'll go the other way. Now in the early going of this first quarter you can see that Miami's defense in the half court has been excellent any time that a Dallas player puts the ball down you're seeing the double teaming that's why they cannot get to the rim Jason Terry picks up his first you can see Jimmy the both teams their game plan first off for Dallas is all right we're going to double Shaquille O'Neal we're going to send a second defender at Wade make the other players beat you and it seems like the heat has the same way with Nowitzki. well that's always uh, it sounds easy uh, it's very hard to do because of the talent of the individuals O'Neal on the offensive rebound and O'Neal is foul the key there Wade drives draws the defender and O'Neal is wide open to get an offensive rebound well when you have two players who can get anywhere from 20 to 35 you know that they're going to have the defenders circle around them especially when they drive to the basket now this is smart basketball anytime that Shaq makes a catch underneath the glass foul him force him to go to the foul line or take the ball out of bounds on the side do not give him an uncontested dunk now that was not Jop's foul it was on Griffin so Jop sits down with one but they like to send fresh body Eric Dampier and Sigana Jop both played O'Neal well Wade with Griffin harassing him tough shot won't go but a foul and Wade will go to the line. Well, Wade during the season was second in the league in foul shot attempts at close to 11 a game. In the playoffs, it's dropped off a little bit, but we realize that he's had the flu in the second and the third round as well as at the beginning of this playoff round. So you know that he's there nine to ten times, but you know he will sacrifice his body and he can finish with either hand. We also missed four free throws. Into the game for the Mavericks, you know, Wade, of course, we talk so much about the flu. And as you see, Wade and O'Neal were the only two to shoot free throws. Very unusual. Nobody else on the Heat were able to do that. But as we said, Wade had the flu last week, conference finals. He said he's received a lot of good remedies. A lot of chicken soup remedies, some different kinds of stew, various variations of, of tea to drink. He said one thing he's got to improve on, and he's going to endear himself to everybody. He says, I don't eat healthy. The big shock in all of this is we're talking about a guy who shoots over 80 percent on the foul line and is struggling in games one and two here. And that's a defense of three seconds. The rule in the NBA passed a couple of years ago, you cannot be a defender and sit in the paint for more than three seconds unless you're closely guarding, and that usually means arm's length, closely guarding your defender. Otherwise, it's a technical foul, one shot. And Nowitzki will put that in. Now keep an eye on this now. You see Shaq is standing in there, but up but underneath the rim. You're seeing that the defender is in the painted area, and he's in there for more than 2.93 seconds. Meanwhile, Terry drives to the basket, gets inside, blocked by Wade. Dampier right there on the follow. Kicks it back out. And Terry, who had that huge game one, exploded to 32. He gives the Mavs the lead. I like the energy at the offensive end for Dallas. Miami, a terrific defensive rebounding team. Already Dallas on the glass, keeping three alive. Josh Howard picks up his first, and with just over three minutes gone by, the Mavericks are in the penalty, sending the heat to the line. For those, again, new to the NBA this time of year, 15 foul per quarter, and you shoot the penalty. So even though it's a non-shooting foul, O'Neal will go for two. 
Now let's look at Shaq's career. We know that he's struggling right now. One for nine in game one, and then he missed the ones earlier tonight. But for his career, he has shot 53%. Then in the playoffs for his entire career, 51%. This season dropped down to 47 percent. In the playoffs, 38 percent. Let's go to Lisa Salters. Well, Mike Shaquille O'Neal, he knows he's got to do better at the free throw line. He said he got some advice from his parents, which he always does. Just go up there and shoot them. He says, but I've seen people who are 80, 90 percent free throw shooters who don't make them when they should. I know when to make them, and hopefully I'll do that. We'll see. Well, it has been a real struggle right now. As Williams gets inside, tough shot from Williams, Dampier the rebound. And Stackhouse, as collides with Steve Javi, falls down turnover. Crowd doesn't like it, but sometimes those things happen. Uh, it happens, it depends upon the angle that the referee is running down. You see Steve Javi's out on the floor. You know, and we know that he belongs outside that sideline. Unfortunately, him, he was trying to find his way. The ref is part of the floor, so no matter what hits him, it's like it's just a part of the floor as that shot from Haslam rolls out. Howard has the advantage here with Jason Williams. Tough spin move. We have two of the better rebounding teams throughout the playoffs in this game tonight. They're excellent on the defensive boards. So you're going to have to work and sacrifice your body. Nice pass, but Wade can't finish. Now here they come. This will be for 48 minutes. Terry, a little stutter move, and gets the bounce. Jason Terry with his second field goal. Miami's must be careful now. You have to shoot a high percentage. You have to keep driving the ball to the basket or work through Shaq so that when you get to the foul line, you slow the game down. Dan Howard, a very gifted defender, is on Wade. Here's the double on O'Neal. Shot clock down to seven. Alley up to O'Neal, but it couldn't get to it. Here they come. They've got the numbers. Stackhouse. And Howard rattles it in. A 9-1 run for the Dallas Mavericks, and Pat Riley wants timeout. If this is the first time that you have witnessed the Dallas game, they put the pressure on you in the open floor. You miss a shot. They steal a ball. They force a turnover. They are so quick. They have four guys on the break, and they are dangerous. They, can, they all can finish and shoot a high percentage. They started slowly in game one. Not the case so far here in game two. A six-point Dallas lead. Back in Dallas, Mavs lead by six. Avery Johnson's first full year as head coach results in a Coach of the Year award and an NBA Finals appearance. He certainly knows his basketball, but the key to his success, he says, it's all about how you treat people. I've just tried to convince them that I care more about them than winning. And that's why I try to do some of the things that I do with them and for them off the court. And then we can talk about basketball and discipline and spacing and pick and rolls and rebounding. But I think I had to first convince them how much I care about them as people. UV, he has tremendous leadership qualities. Dirk Nowitzki talks about it, all the players do. They talk about the will of Avery. He's just, he's a charismatic young man and he just, he's got this ability to get people to follow him. Well, you're right about that, Mike, and he's right in their souls because they'll all talk about the spiritual side of him also, as well as the X's and O's, and he is a stern disciplinarian. Yes, he can be tough. He can chew you out and get in your face, but the players love his, how genuine he is. Shot blocked, but a foul as Jason Williams falls down and some free throws coming up as we go to Stu Scott. Mike, last year during the finals, during an emotional timeout, Larry Brown told his Pistons team, he said, I love you. So I asked Avery the other day, would you ever tell your team during a timeout, I love you? He said, no, not during a timeout. He said, that's because I tell them throughout the year. I tell them I love you a lot. They know I love them because I take them to lunch. And they know I love them because I let Stackhouse's kids come over, spend the night at my house, and eat up all of my food. So I guess when, you get, when your kids get to go eat the coach's food, I, Mike, I think that's love. I think so. And you know, Avery also... Earlier this year, Keith Van Horn, he let him miss a practice when they were on the road because he said he felt Van Horn needed to be with his kids. 
Those are the type of things he does to show the team that he does care about them people-wise. And as you, you said, when it comes to X's and O's, he's ready and, and certainly able as well. Well, they have a very good staff here, and they work well together with the players. Stackhouse can't hit. Well, right now, Miami, let's face it, inside of five minutes, and they do not have a score. Uh, never mind the fact that they can't make a field goal. The problem is they've also missed five foul shots. Terry to Stackhouse. He was out of bounds. And yeah, they'll go the other way. Yeah, no excuse for that. No way that you run the lane that deep. Anytime that you run the lane, you should be making your break foul line extended. If you extended the foul line out to the sideline, make your break then. That way you'll never have a problem and you'll never be behind the back. The Heat promise to start their offense through Shaquille O'Neal. He's got Dampier on him now. There's the double team, and there's a defensive three seconds down the other end, so a technical foul and one shot for Miami. Now Shaq will hold his catch. When Shaq makes the catch, he will allow the double team to come before he makes a move. And then he will wait and see where all the cutters are. If the cutters are open, he'll give them the ball. If not, he'll try to split the trap. So Williams hits that. Still only three for eight as Devin Harris checks in for the first time. A terrific backup point guard. Terry gets a rest, but as fast as Terry is, Harris might be a little faster. A second-year point guard out of Wisconsin who has really made a name for himself in this postseason. Well, he's their best defender out on the perimeter. He does an excellent job. Right now, they're in a zone. All right, they're playing zone right now, 2-3. You go right to Shaq because he'll be played man-to-man. -man. Shot clock down to three. Williams getting penetration, but can't finish again. Here they come. Oh, nice pass, Stackhouse. Howard somehow able to get it. Stackhouse tip won't go. And Haslam, Haslam should have let it go. It would have been heat ball. Instead, he tried to save it, and Dallas will take possession. Now, if this is your first look at Dallas, you can see how quick this team is. They have five guys who can get out and really make it happen. And the big thing is they run hard, they're very unselfish, and they'll make the extra pass on the break. And they'll keep it up for the full 48 minutes. It appeared that Dallas touched that last. Nowitzki inside, draws contact, count it. And the foul is Nowitzki with a chance for a three-point play. Now, Dirk Davitsky is taking double teaming off the dribble. Now, just watch. Any time that he spins, they have guys coming at him from the blind side. Now, he accepts that. We know that when you are averaging 28 points and 12 rebounds coming into the, into the finals, you know that you are a dangerous dude. And you got to give Miami credit in that first game. They did a terrific job in forcing him into bad angles on his release and cutting down his shot attempts. Novitsky who in the conference finals against Phoenix had a poor game. He had 11. He bounced back with a 50-point game. Yes, he had a poor game, but he only had 16 in game one. We'll see how he returns here in game two. Wade stripped. Ball deflected. The Mavericks defense strong once again. Novitski finding Stackhouse. Stackhouse skits inside. Harris hesitated. And Novitski tough shot falling away. Howard tried to save it, and he falls. Anytime you're playing, Mike, with players that are going to get double teamed off the dribble, when they get double teamed and they make that pass to you and you're wide open, you must be able to catch and shoot the basketball. If not, catch and drive the ball to the rim. Just do not take one dribble. You take one dribble, the defense gets a chance to reshift and get in position. And so those shooting numbers, they've missed their last seven. He haven't had a field goal in over six minutes. As they're down by seven. Now, this is the guy that's got to get going. Dwayne Wade has got to start getting some shots at the basket. Haslam takes it to the rim. Good aggressive move from Udonis Haslam, the local kid. Grew up in Miami, went to high school in Miami. And college at Florida, so he spent almost his entire life in Miami. Now, the guy who's living a dream, playing in the NBA Finals for his hometown team. Harris to the rim. Boy, he is so quick. Uh, that's what he does, and he does it well. Uh, he's excellent in driving to the basket and then elevating and playing the board at, a, at an angle outside of the painted area, the lane area. Haslam left open. Can't connect on that one. Dampier again. Good job boxing out on O'Neal, which he did in game one as well. 
Harris, a little hyper right now to start. He's, he's going so fast. Williams can't finish again, but a foul. Jason Williams was looking for the shot blocker, and he lost concentration on that layup. Dirk Nowitzki was running to his right, and then instead of laying it up over the rim, now just keep an eye on this now. Watch to the left of your screen. Harris is there, but Dirk Nowitzki is right there in your picture. Dirk did not go for it. Well, the foul is on Nowitzki. See, you see that left hand just yeah, got on Williams. That's exactly right. It was on his back. Lightly, you say lightly, but the referee sees that angle. I like what Devin Harris did. He lifted his hand, tried to get the foul call on him. Our calendar for these NBA Finals, Tuesday Game 3. The series will ship to Miami for Games 3, 4, and 5. Thursday Game 4, then next Sunday Game 5. Of course, that if necessary. And our coverage will begin at 8.30 Eastern. Tip-offs shortly after 9 Eastern. Pat Riley, you know he's happy with the fact that his guys are driving the basketball hard to the rim. Jason Williams, Haslam, uh, Wade is trying, but so far no shots. Every time Shaq touches, he's trying to muscle his way to the rim. He wants to get to the foul line. You say, what's the big deal? Well, this is a team that shoots 28 to 30 a game, and when they do that, that's when they're at their best. In game one, only 19 attempts. So Nowitzki sits down with the two fouls. Van Horn will make an appearance. They called a delay of game penalty on the Dallas Mavericks because nobody was on the inside spot of the free throw lane. Each team has to have that. The opponents are the free throw shooter. And delay a game doesn't mean a heck of a lot, except if you get called for a second one, it's a That's technical right. foul. And Williams bounces in the second. Again, Miami, and as Harris calls timeout, with the poor shooting and the rough start, they're only down by five. Avery Johnson and Bob Delaney with a discussion. Just under three and a half remaining first quarter from Dallas. Thanks for watching ABC Sports. Oh, baby. Oh, the NBA Finals. Devin Harris, a young player that they're very high on here in Dallas. A Milwaukee product. Grew up with a brother and a sister. Was a terrific athlete right from the start. Cute kid, obviously. Not just a basketball player when he got to high school. Was an all-conference volleyball player. Then played three years at Wisconsin. Started every game in his three years there. And he is a very quick point guard. And has done an excellent job throughout the postseason for the Dallas Mavericks as we go to Stu Scott. Mike, Devin Harris, second-year guy. I talked to him just before the final started, the day before. I said, how crazy is it? And he had this look like he was 12 years old. He said, man, woo! And he just shook his head. He said, I can't believe this. And I said, how much is that going to affect you playing? He said, and he looked at me like I was crazy. And he said, this is just the media. He said, basketball is basketball. We all been playing basketball since we were five years old. That's the easy part, right? Well, he came out of Wisconsin after his third year, and he second-guessed himself last year as a rookie. It was an easy start for him. He even said that Dirk Nowitzki picked on him in practice, made it tough on the rookie, and called his coaches and called some people, but he got through it, and what a breakout playoff he has had. Gary Payton has checked in for the first time, as has James Posey. Howard can't hit. That was the first true set play run by Dallas, all right? And they end up with a wide open 18 to 20 foot jump shot off a double screen. To use the set plays with a quick, oh, Wade flips it up. Ball knocked out of his hands with a foul. Wade with the personal as he hit Dampier. He not in the penalty, so Dallas will inbound as Jason Terry returns. Now, if you watch. Dwayne Wade in the Detroit series. You saw that he got to the basket at will any quarter that he attempted to go. You can see tonight he's struggling. In game one, 28 points, six rebounds, six assists, four steals. I right, had a solid game. Harris got an offensive foul going the other way. Moving screen on Eric Dampier. Well, this, this crew, this officiating crew, very, very good. They have been tough early on the zone calls in the painted area. No moving screens. They're not going to allow you to step and move. Now, right now, the buildings is upset on that, but Dampier definitely moved so that the player could not split the screen. You know, in years past, when you were coaching, people would have paid money to hear you say this officiating crew is very, very good. 
Words we never thought you'd say. Listen, I, I used to improve the party for the officials at the end of the year. <laughs> okay. O'Neal, and he travels. Some of his feet. Now that's a tough one. The bench right over there, Miami bench, very upset on that. They couldn't believe it. Pat Riley, you know, he had a bad angle, bad angle down on that play. But Shaq, as long as he keeps mixing up his moves, he'll be fine through the evening. And Dallas has not been able to take advantage of the offensive struggles. Nice pass, but Van Horn couldn't hold on. That's six turnovers for Dallas. That's one of the reasons Miami's still in the first quarter here. Yeah, that's a, a great statement, Mike. They have had so many opportunities on the fast break and even in the half-court quick-hitting offense. They continue to get open guys going to the basket, but that will improve as this game moves on. Walker hits a three. Antoine Walker from downtown. And again, despite all the struggles, they get back with it, too. Walker took a lot of shots. He took 19 shots in game one, perhaps too many. As Posey with a silly foul. 14 foul for the Heat. Now, Antoine Walker, you must pay attention. You double-team Shaq, he'll give it up. We told you that if your man leaves you, you know you're going to be open. Antoine Walker attempts seven threes a game throughout this playoff. That rally felt they took too many threes in game one. Stackhouse, nice adjustment for the bad shot. And it'll go the other way. So they'll take it out. The referees have been very consistent. They're not going to allow body contact. All right, they're not going to allow you to smack guys around away from the ball. So you must adjust now. And especially when you're going to the basket. You get hit, you know you're going to go to the foul line. The supporting cast from Miami helping. And Wade draws the foul on Harris. Went for the fake. And Wade will go to the line. Wade 0 for 3 from the field. Avery Johnson says we'll send many defenders at him. Three or four. He's that Wade, good. Wade. We'll try and wear him down. They perhaps did in game one as Wade admitted he was tired down the stretch of the fourth quarter. A reminder, the FIFA World Cup continues Monday at 11.55 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2 as the United States will play their first game against the Czech Republic. ESPN and ABC, your home for every game of the 2006 World Cup, presented by Adidas. O'Neal will sit. Now, Dwayne Wade on the line. He'll be played by a number of people. We know that starting out will be Adrian Griffith. Then you know Josh Howard has had him since Griffith went out of the game. Then you know Daniels will get a piece of him, as well as Harris. So they continue to move their people around to try to wear them down. Seven straight points, and the game is tied. As we're under a minute and a half left in the opening period. Now, right now, this is Miami's first time in a 2-3 zone. Both teams used it effectively in game one. Nice block from Walker. What's the key? Let's look at here for Miami. What's the key? What is their objective for playing zone? Well, what the first thing you do is you're taking a team out of their half-court set. You're not going to let them run continuity. The second thing is you're trying to sometimes hide a player so that they do not get in foul trouble. Also, the third thing is keep them perimeter and to force them to shoot a high percentage. Well, that wasn't a high percentage shot as they had to rush it with the shot clock winding down. So the zone defense does a job that time. Now they're right back in there. Now here they are. Now see, they're playing high. They get out after you. Posey spinning. And he's the wraparound. So the foul goes against Alonzo Mourning. Now Pat Riley wanted. That was his plea to his team for the last two days. Drive the ball to the basket. Do not settle for jump shots. We were 5 for 20 in threes. And also, outside of Wade and Shaq, no other player attempted a foul shot. Well, right now, they're doing that. Unfortunately, they're turning the ball over. Right now, Miami back in the zone. Terry. Stackhouse left open. That's a two-pointer. And Gary Stackhouse, one of the best six men in the NBA, a former big-time scorer, started most of his career, has done an excellent job coming off the bench for Dallas. Boy, Devin Harris, his ball denial is just terrific. A very quick feed, Mike. He's their best perimeter defender. And a foul on Van Horn. They said that Van Horn flopped, let that go, and then because he just happened to be in the wrong place, wrong time, he tripped up Morning. And Morning was 
you too. Now you're going to see there's going to be contact here. Now just watch it. There's the contact right there. Now is that a flop or did, did he take it in his chest? Well, if you're a Dallas fan, the, the angle that you see it, of course, he, he fouled him. He went right into his chest. Now, the referees looking at that have got to say, hey, Dan Horn is a stronger player physically than and he should be able to handle that contact because his arms were up. Let's take another look at it. There's another missed free throw. Now keep an eye on it. See, he took it right there. Now, depending upon your angle on the call, if the referee is on the baseline and he doesn't have a good look at that, he's going to put you on the line to shoot too. Now, because we got that in slow motion, that was definitely an offensive foul. Ubi, I think that's the toughest call for officials to make to determine Absolutely. whether it was a flop or not. Absolutely. All right, shot clock is turned off as we wind down the opening period. Both teams' defense playing very aggressively to start the game. Harris on the drive, flips it up, blocked by Morning, and that will end the first quarter. The defense rules here to start game two. As Dallas shoots just 33% from the field, Miami just 29% after one, a one-point game. The NBA cares about the community. On Friday, NBA Commissioner David Stern, Mavs owner Mark Cuban, and Dallas Mayor Laura Miller join NBA legends Bill Russell, Dominique Wilkins, and Clyde Drexler to dedicate a new reading and learning center near the area. Jason Terry and Daryl Armstrong also on hand to showcase the renovations that were completed at the center. Included new computers from Radio Shack, ABC Sports, and Disney Publishing. Also pitching in as well, donating books. NBA Care is continuing a tradition of basketball and a service to the community. Mark Cuban certainly pitching in. He has been so great here in the city of Dallas since he took over back in January of 2000. This was a franchise that was really struggling in the 90s. Seven of the 10 years, they lost 50-plus games. Now they win 50-plus games every year. And he has just invigorated the city. He has made it a destination for free agent players want to play here. It's a great atmosphere. And now they're playing for a championship. Well, they have a terrific coaching staff, outstanding talent. You know, they have uh, seven guys uh, out of top ten in the draft. So they have a ton of talent here. Now, right now, with Van Horn at the center position and Nowitzki playing power forward, they're going against a... Miami unit with morning that way morning can stay on the floor at one end of the floor you might see zone but it's easier for the matchups Antoine Walker throws up a three morning wide open underneath with the advantage that Posey recognized it see in game one morning only played five and a half minutes every time Van Horn came in the game they would take morning out and then they would play small against small that was to their disadvantage tonight morning is staying on the floor there's Wade with the steal He's been averaging over two a game in the playoffs, and he has really added his defensive game to all the scoring he's done. Well, he's in the top six in the league through the season in steals. He always gets over a couple of games. He's doing that in the playoffs. He's terrific off the ball. And the Heat have regained the lead as Terry spots up and it's short. Morning the rebound. It's going to be interesting to watch this group that's out there for Miami. They keep continuing to play zone. They're going to force the Dallas ball club to move the basketball and show us that they have a good zone attack. Morning left-handed flips it in. Well, he can do that, Mike. Come on now, this guy scored a ton of points. He was a 2010 man for many, many years when he was at Charlotte and in Miami. He's got the jump hooks. Seven times in his career, he averaged 20 points per game. Now a backup player here to Shaquille O'Neal. Van Horn spots up. And Keith Van Horn with a lift off the bench. Now, that's that's the disadvantage. When you go man to man. All right, morning is on Van Horn. Van Horn has now made two perimeter shots because it was in the flow and it's man to man. When they're in the zone, you can hide morning back in the back of the zone, and then the top perimeter people in your zone will pick up Van Horn. Van Horn has that perimeter shooting talent, able to break the zone as Wade gets inside, hop steps, and one too many in the travel. Now we're seeing shoddy play at both ends of the floor. 
And by that we mean that is the fifth turnover for Miami, and Dallas already has six. And that's so out of character for Dallas because they only average 11 or 12 during the entire playoffs. Now Miami, we know that's one of their Achilles heels throughout the playoffs, 17 turnovers a game. You see Van Horn, he's the only player on Dallas with NBA Finals experience. He did it with New Jersey back in 2002, played against Shaquille O'Neal and the Lakers. The Nets got swept. He says his memory of that Finals, $20,000 worth of tickets he had to buy for family and friends. An expensive sweep. Howard knocked away. Here comes Wade, one man to beat. Wade gets inside. Beautiful move from Dwayne Wade. Always cross over. Always cross over or reverse your dribble. You saw what happened to Nowitzki as a defensive player. He turned him around twice. Now, you can see what they're doing. On a score or a foul shot, Miami is playing a 2-3 zone. Terry. Daniels getting some minutes here in the first half. Gets inside. Van Horn spots up for three. Rushed it. Here comes Peyton. Larry Payton playing in his third NBA Finals. Still looking for his first ring. In and out. Daniels inside. Offensive foul. James Posey steps in and draws the charge. Now both referees, still Javi and Bob Delaney, both had that call. They were definitely sure of the play. Now keep an eye at the bottom of the screen. You could see that the heel was across the line. Uh, this is just Dwayne Wade at his best. Now that's the first one. Now on this next one, all right, now just watch as he turns the defender around. See, by changing direction. Change direction, defender's at a disadvantage. Blood, sweat, and tears is what it's all for. You know, this right here. So, you know, to to be, have an opportunity to play for this, uh, you know, means a lot. Dwayne Wade is playing for it. It is just his third year in the NBA out of Barquette. He's only 24 years old. One thing's for certain, he is a coach's dream. He's just a pure winner. I mean, just he's he's absolutely fearless. Wants the ball in any clutch situation. Uh, thinks he's the best player on the floor. You know, and, and not in an arrogant way, but in a confident way. And I love having him. And he is a very, very, very smart player, too. Very smart. He understands the game and he's competitive. He has all the intangibles that, you know, that you know, great players have. He has a tremendous desire to really be the best. He really does. He doesn't talk much about it, but I know it. I can see it. Four years apart, his current coaches and his former coach saying the same things about this terrific young man who is blossoming into one of the premier players this league has seen in a long time. As Posey hits a three-pointer. James Posey's been on fire through the entire season shooting three. Shot over 40% during the year, and he's up over 43% in the playoffs. Posey, one of the new members of the Miami Heat in that 5-team, 13-player deal as Nowitzki knocks it down. Well, as Dallas pretty much kept their team intact from last year, the Heat made many changes, getting the Jason Williams, the James Poseys, the Antoine Walkers, Gary Payton. Big changes Pat Riley made. They struggled at first early this season, but then started nice to come pay. together as Haslam gets inside. You've got to make those. You've got to make those. That was a beautiful pass by Shaq. Howard. Wide open. That's a three. Howard knocks it down. He had just been two for seven. He's got three point range. Well, there's a simple, simple thing that you must execute when you get trapped. When you trap, make the first pass out of the trap, then make the second pass. And you can see right there, the second pass open wide open, and you'll get a high percentage look at the basket. So he's going to drop his second foul, so he'll come out. See, they made the first pass there, and then here comes the second pass. And that's just beautiful, unselfish basketball. Unfortunately, a lot of times guys want to shoot it after the first pass. Make the second pass. 
stretch the defense, stretch the defense. That's been one of the keys for the two stars on their respective teams. Nowitzki and Wade always willing to make that extra pass, never forcing the action or rarely. Nice defense from Dampier. Yes, indeed. He is having a very solid series so far. Well, he played that well. He was up over the top of Shaq and he put out that long arm. Look at O'Neal guarding on the perimeter. Terry. That three-pointer off. Oh, what a tip from Howard. And a foul. Josh Howard with a difficult play. And he got hit. Now the officials conferring. Count the basket, they say. Now keep an eye right in the left-hand corner. You're seeing Posey and Howard are locked right there. Posey's on side. Now they get the first tap right there by Howard. You can see he goes right up inside. Good move. The foul was not against Howard. It was against Dampier. So this is just a one-shot foul for Dampier because of the made basket. So Dampier making his presence felt. He's already got five rebounds. And can't hit the free throw. Posey nearly lost it. Five minutes gone by, here in the second. Mavericks leading by two, along with Yuki Brown, Stuart Scott, Lisa Salters, Mike Green on hand. Game two of the NBA Finals. Heat trying to even things up. Peyton can't connect. And Novitski touched it last. Actually, it looked like Haslam was starting to walk up the floor. Steve Javi, though, says no. Uh, that's the right call, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. And we get to see it in slow motion. That's right. <laughs> Posey tries another three. And again, the Mavericks stumble a bit, but hold on this time. Well, the defensive rebounding at both ends has been outstanding. Both teams are shooting in the 30s, and yet no one can get an offensive rebound, and especially an offensive rebound score. Terry. Got clock down to four. Howard knocked away by Peyton. Good hands. Oh. Perry right back with the steal and puts it in. Bad pass. Bad pass. Anytime you make a steal, you never throw the ball across the court in the backcourt, especially when there is traffic. 9 0 run. And Dallas back up by four. Good timeout. Good timeout by Pat Riley. Just past the midway point of the second quarter. And after the Miami Heat went on a run, Dallas comes back in a smart defensive play. Now, good hands right here. You get the deflection. But see, the Cardinals never jump up in the air when you're going to pass. And that's what happens. They play the passing lanes. They get the steal. Just past the midway point, second quarter. Uh, the Mavericks leading by four. Again, this postseason is a coming out party for Josh Howard. Howard, a terrific young player, his third year out of Wake Forest. He might be in Dallas right now, but he can't leave his hometown no matter where he goes. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Some special people are back there that he thinks about all the time. Home is where the heart is, and uh, that's how I was brought up. Um, I've always been around my grandma and my mom. And they, they're, they're a big part of my success, so, I mean, that's all I think about. Just being successful and graduating from college. I know that was a big thing for my grandma. I had the opportunity to leave college early, but stuck around one more year. And uh, I think it was good for me, having mature as a man and as a person. Well, he certainly is maturing as a player as well as Wade misses. Ball knocked loose. Howard also says he's, he wants to win a championship for his mother. He worked in nursing homes when they were growing up. She used to go to all his games throughout his career when he was a kid, and he says she never shut up. All she did was cheer and yell and scream all game long and say, Mom, please be quiet. No way. Mom was too proud of her son who just made a pretty pass. Absolutely. Right now, Shaq has only had two shot attempts in his first half. Wade can't put it in. He scored the first bucket, UB, for them. Hasn't scored since. Exactly right. Now Dallas doing a terrific job on the defensive board. Howard inside. 13 straight points by the Mavericks. And their lead is eight, the largest of the first half. They have that explosive ability in a short time. Aslan, nice move inside. 
When Miami attacks the basket, Mike, good things have happened for them. They've gotten fouled. They've taken 14 foul shots. Their problem is they're shooting such a low percentage, and they cannot get any second shot attempt. Well, hard foul. Both players go down hard, but that was just a good, clean block. It looked worse than it was because of the way Terry went down. Haslam picks up his second. He's shaken up as well. Now, this is just a great defensive move by Haslam. He's coming from the other side. You're going for the shot block. And watch it, you're going to see right up top. He goes for the shot block, and Terry gets away with pushing that left hand out right into Haslam's chest. So Haslam shaking up. That's his second foul. And one, one of those underrated players. There's Terry to the line. Terry had that great game one, 32 points. He is starting to become a big time playoff performer. Again, his first five years with Atlanta, never played. Then he comes here to Dallas and was a big part of last year when they lost in the conference semifinals. And this year's had some big games, including game one. Well, Mike, he's been very consistent throughout the year. Second in scoring to Nowitzki. He shoots a good percentage from the floor, a high three-point shooter, and then also an excellent foul shooter. And naturally, he would have to miss that because of that <laughs> statement. But we know that he is a good mid-80 percent shooter on the line. He's not a pure point guard. He's more of a scoring point guard, and that's been the biggest adjustment for him. And he's the guy that had to try and replace Steve Nash as the starting point guard here. Walker, nice fake. But he looked at his pivot foot. That's the third travel called in the first half on Miami. Well, right now, with four minutes to go, one team has 37 points, the other team has 30. What is killing them at both ends? Miami, nine turnovers, and Dallas has 10 turnovers. And sometimes they go stretches without getting it to Shaquille O'Neal as Novitsky short. Dampier, the offensive rebound. He's got six boards here in 10 minutes off the bench. Nowitzki to Griffin. Nowitzki foul. Wade reaches in. That's going to be the second foul on Wade. The Heat not in the penalty. We so told you early that any time there's double team. Now look at Shaq. See, Shaq is working. He's in the painted area like that. You can see the frustration. Any time that you got a big man who can score and shoot a high percentage, Shaq leads the league every year over 60%. He's shooting over 60% in the playoff. When he has his man that low pin, you must give him the basketball. He needs to get up more shot attempts. As Nowitzki gets inside, right. nice pass from Terry, his fifth assist. Good yeah. movement. Good movement, Mike. They're moving extremely well without the ball. And then the guy is making the extra pass to find the man for the high percentage shot. A 16 to 2 run, largest lead of the half for Dallas. And again, their defense has been superb. Now they get it to O'Neal. And O'Neal finally gets another two. There's not much you can do about that, Mike. When he goes for that jump hook or the baseline jump shot or the power move, you're at his mercy. I think he's going to tell his teammates something at halftime. I would think so. And more important, Miami fans hope so. Now under the three-minute mark. Howard the fake. And a three-second violation. Offensive three seconds. And now we'll have a timeout. Avery Johnson not happy with that turnover, but overall his team playing well. Jason Terry and the Dallas Mavericks, a seven-point lead here in game two with just over two and a half remaining in the second. Six when trailing at halftime in the postseason. That trend held up in game one. Will it hold up in game two? The Miami Heat down seven as we head inside three minutes. T-Mobile halftime report coming up. Dan Patrick with Mark Jackson and Michael Wilbon. We talked about Shaq getting more touches, more opportunities. Three field goal attempts first half. Do you blame Miami or credit Dallas? Got to give credit to Avery Johnson and his strategy. Get the ball out of Shaq's hands and force other guys to beat him. Shaq's been dumping the ball out quickly, but his teammates have been hitting. Miami shooting under 30%. He's finding guys that are not responding. All right. Plenty more coming up. T-Mobile halftime report, including a closer look at this man, Bob Delaney, officiating in the finals, a far cry from the days of infiltrating the mob. More on that coming up at halftime. Let's go back to Mike Brain. Brainy.
All right, Dan, it is an amazing story we'll look for. Meanwhile, right now, it's time for our Coors Light freeze cam, and it involves Dallas and the way they communicate. Now, keep an eye right here. Now, this is just a great drop-off pass. There are two defenders on Dirk. He's going to pass the ball. Now, watch when he passes. The both defenders go with him, give and go, take it to the rim. Now, he already in this game has 12 points, 9 rebounds, and he's giving you the all-around look tonight. Levitsky was looking right at Terry as soon as he passed it, and he knew there was a chance for an opening. In the playground, give it up and go. What is it? Give it go. <laughs> playground basketball. There you see O'Neal and Wade not been able to get it going. Now O'Neal getting the ball a little bit more. Wade wanted to lob it to him. Walker another three, and Walker again shooting too many threes. Now once again, see they're in a zone defense, and they force him to kick it out and then take that big, long three-point shot. Wade, lots of contact, I'm going to say, before the shot. Now it's not a penalty, as Josh Howard will pick up his second foul. Now Dallas doing an excellent job. Anytime that there is a timeout and Miami has possession, they change up. They usually will play a zone defense to negate whatever Miami strategy was coming out of their huddle. Now they've done a good job forcing long jump shots. Well, Griffin comes in. Stackhouse is now on Wade. They've really done an excellent job on Wade. Now Griffin comes up on him in his zone. That's right. Haslam. We said at the top what had to improve. Their attack versus the zone. The middle of the zone is open. When Shaq is in the game, if he steps into the middle, he's open. The guy is playing behind him. If he's on one side of the lane, the middle of the zone is open. Stackhouse. Terry and Jason Williams bumped him. Terry got a decent shot off as Williams picks up the foul. Now that was just a smart play by Jason Terry. Keep an eye on uh, Miami here right now. Now watch in the middle of the zone. See Shaq is coming to the one side, so the man's coming with him. But well, once, once you catch the ball in the middle, Dampier, if he leaves Shaq, they're going to hit Shaq, you're going to get dunked on. So a beautiful move by Hazen. O'Neal again, his three shot attempts in his 18 minutes of play here in the first half. Terry way short. Yeah, the Mavericks missing some free throws. Right, tonight we're seeing guys who shoot in the mid-80s miss their foul shot. Six-point game with just over a minute and a half left in the second. Walker again. Now that's a good look that time, but he just can't get him to go. Well, you see, now that's the problem. Uh, for Dallas, it's great. Play man to man, double team Shaq, force him to pass, make the other guys make the shot. Terry hits the bottom of the rim, but Adrian Griffin, oh, the rebound. That's just hustle, hustle, hustle. Novitsky, Stackhouse for three, knocks it down. Now that is great team play. Adrian Griffin out hustled Jason Williams for that ball. Dirk Nowitzki had a shot at the foul line. He makes the extra shot pass into the corner for a wide open three. And again, the hustle of Griffin, the intangibles of Adrian Griffin, and a carry. Wade turns it over, and that's number nine for Miami. This happened in game one, last couple of minutes of the second quarter. Dallas turned it on. Well, the people remember now game one. Miami only scored 13 points in the second quarter, 12 points in the fourth quarter. Final minute of the first half. It's a clear out. Asim gets right up on Novitsky. Stackhouse, a long three. Does it again. Oh, and a foul. Oh, oh. Chance for a four-point play. Jerry Stackhouse back-to-back -back threes. And he'll get to add another with the free throw. Now Stackhouse, we know, has been a scorer ever since he came in the league. This is just a great concentrated look. Takes the hit. Now this is a young man who at one time for Detroit scored 29 points a game. And now he's accepted a role coming off the bench. 13 points, five rebounds in game one. And now he is off and running here in game two. And Wade with his third foul. Didn't look like there was much contact. And Wade yelling at Steve Jabby. I think we got a technical foul on Dwayne Wade. Oh, the one thing you cannot do is yell at this crew. This crew will only take it for a short period. It's against Pat Riley, not Wade. Or is it against Wade? 
Well, they shoot the one shot technical. They originally announced that that was Riley as Nowitzki misses the free throw, but it is Wade. So Wade picks up the technical. Again, we've seen so many of these playoff games where are decided by a point or two. You can't be giving away points by losing your temper. And there's the technical right there on Wade. Plus, now Wade, again, you're one technical away from automatic ejection. You can pick up your second, you're done. You know, right can understand now. his frustrations, but he got to hold back. That's right. And Pat Riley's taking him out of the game right now. He just does not want to have him eight, maybe pick up a foul or pick up a, a turnover. Most of them are not hit on the touch. They've blown this open with a 13-point lead. See, Gampier is fighting Shaq. He's really fighting him hard to front him. And then when he's fronted, when they brought the ball back to the top of the circle, Dampier out-hustled the passer. He fronted Shaq again, forcing a bad angle on that pass. There is Dampier, the 10th year center out of Mississippi State, and he's done an excellent job against O'Neal so far in the series. About a two and a half second difference between shot clock and game clock. Harris lost it. Stackhouse for three. Oh, the shot clock expires. Williams gets it off in time, but falls short. And the Mavericks end the half on an 11-0 run and lead by 16. Now, this is just alert play. You can see Jerry's he's running back door, and now when he sprints to that corner, Peyton was laying off him. And then what happens? A good pass and a miraculous shot. Let's send it over to Stuart Scott. Mike, thanks a lot. Eric Dampier, Shaq had 11 shots in game one. Everybody with the pulse knew he'd take a lot more this game. But he only has three at the half. What are you all doing to keep him away from the basket? Well, I think it's just a team effort. You know, we're out there helping every each one, everyone else when we're out there on the floor. So guys are just giving them different looks. You know, we just try to play the best we can. Obviously, we know he's going to touch the ball a lot. He's an excellent player, so we're just going out there and making a team effort. When does Dirk decide to actually crash down on the double once he touches it? Uh, it depends on if he's in scoring position or not. You know, uh, we've been coming a lot. He's been passing it out, which makes those guys make big plays, but they haven't been making a lot of plays. We've been hitting the board, and we're able to get out of transition, hey, and, we're, and we're running. We're, we're making shots right now. All right, Eric, good luck in the second half. Zero points for Eric Dampier, but six huge rebounds, Mike. Another strong performance from Dampier and the Dallas bench. After the break, we'll send it to Dan Patrick, Michael Wilbon, and Mark Jackson for the T-Mobile halftime report. Jerry Stacka scores the last 10 points for the Mavericks. They're up 16 at halftime of game two. Finals in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the T-Mobile Halftime Report. Dallas led by two and won game one by ten. Leading game two by 16 at halftime thanks to a 27-6 run to close out the first half. And a big reason, Jerry Stackhouse, the former Tar Heel. He scored the final 10 points of the first half. He's got 12 points so far. T-Mobile Halftime Report. I'm Dan Patrick, along with Mark Jackson and Michael Wilbon. Let's look at the Mavs and the positives and with the Miami Heat and Shaquille O'Neal. Where do you want to start? Oh, with the Mavs, you talk about Dirk Nowitzki, four assists, taking the double teams, finding guys wide open, and those guys are rewarding his trust by knocking down shots. That will open up offense for Dirk down the stretch. When you talk about the Miami Heat, Shaquille O'Neal doing the exact same thing, passing out of the double team, but his troops are not knocking down shots. If they don't knock down shots, then Avery Johnson looks like a genius and forces other guys to beat him. All right, let's look at uh, Shaquille O'Neal. This is the last four quarters of how he's played, and the numbers aren't pretty for Shaquille O'Neal. What numbers jump out at you there, Mark? 
a thing of obviously the free throw shooting, but the points. They are taking Shaquille O'Neal out of this series. Give Avery Johnson a lot of credit with the double teams daring other guys to beat him. Dwayne Wade can beat him with his offense from the perimeter, but he is not allowing Shaq to be a force in this series. Yeah, but Michael, at what point does Shaq say, I have to take matters into my own hands here? He can't. He can't do that when he's being double and triple teamed that quickly. I mean, before he can put the ball on the floor, Dallas is sitting two, sometimes Dirk at seven feet as big as Shaq is the second guy in to double team. They're going to have to hit some shots. Center is still a dependent position, and Shaq is dependent on some teammates helping him. But you've also seen Shaq getting very frustrated. But give, give Shaq credit because he's making the basketball play. He's playing the right way. He has to give up the basketball. All right. It's uh, all good in Deutschland these days. You got Dirk Nowitzki doing well in the finals, and Germany, his homeland, continues hosting soccer's World Cup after winning its opener. The NBA Finals are sharing the world's attention with another event underway in Germany, and the United States is a part of it. Tomorrow, Team USA takes to the pitch for its first match. Four years of waiting, of rising hopes, world rankings, and expectations finally are put to the test on the biggest stage for the world's most popular sport. It's a critical game won in the tournament's toughest pool. Team USA versus the Czech Republic. The FIFA World Cup. One game changes everything. Three decades ago, one of tonight's game officials worked undercover fighting organized crime. Coming up, the story of Bob Delaney.